Hey guys, it's Mike here, and today I'm going to run you through a quick tutorial on focus stacking. So what exactly is focus stacking? Well, in photography, the general idea is the higher aperture you have, the more depth of field you'll get, which is true. But a lot of landscape photographers don't understand that when you focus on something or you have a very close subject and a very far subject and you want that whole scene nice and sharp, even an f22 or an f32 aperture is not going to get you that sharpness throughout. So there is an area where that, that depth of field essentially falls off. So I use focus stacking to create uh, or to use multiple images to create one sharp image all the way through. So how is it done? Well, let's use this image here that I shot in Death Valley last week as an example. I had these awesome mud cracks, beautiful leading lines and patterns. And I was shooting this part of the mud crack was maybe about five, six inches away from the front of my lens. So extremely close. And then I had these mountains back here about half, three quarters of a mile away. And I wanted a shot where this whole scene was nice and sharp. Now I was shooting at F11, which is a moderate uh, depth of field. But even at F22, I would still run into the issue here where this part would be very sharp and then you'd see a pretty drastic fall off in sharpness. So focus stacking is done by, by uh, shooting multiple frames at the same settings and not changing anything but your focus point. So let me show you what that looks like in the photos. This first shot, obviously on a tripod, I focused right here, closest point Got that really nice and sharp, and you can see the fall off in softness, or sorry, in sharpness here. Second image, I focus a little bit further back. So you can see this area is nice and sharp here. Now we're losing a little bit of sharpness at our closest points. Third image, I focus even further back. You can start seeing the details are nice and sharp back here, but obviously we're gonna start losing a lot more sharpness up here. And the fourth and final image was then shot with the focus on the mountains. So there's our mountains, nice and sharp. And if we zoom back out and in at the front, whoa, we're way out of focus here. So we have four images and your focus stacks can be, you know, one, two, well not one, sorry, two, three, four, five, six images, as many as you want until you feel like you've obtained sharpness throughout the frame. You know, some people who do macro photography can shoot literally dozens of images for their focus stack, if not more. So where do we go from here? We've now shot our four images for our focus stack. We brought, uh, bring them into Lightroom. And what I like to do, and this isn't gonna be a full edit, so I'm just gonna give you guys the general idea here. I like to go in and edit one of the images and get that image looking pretty close to how I want it to look. So let's go ahead and just make some very subtle adjustments here. Like I said, this is not gonna be a real edit, just kind of throwing some sliders around so you guys can get the idea. So say like I go in and I edit this and I get it to where it looks absolutely perfect. I've thrown in the grad, I've warmed it up a little bit and so on and so on. Okay, so I get this image looking exactly the way that I want it to look. What I do then is I right click on the image. Whoops, not go to Facebook. Right click on the image. And then I can go to, uh... all right, so what I do is I right click on the thumbnail of the image, go to develop settings, copy settings. I then make sure that every box is checked and say like some aren't checked, you go in and manually check them or you just hit check all. You want all the settings to be the same, so you hit check all, copy. Then you go down to the remaining images that are part of your focus stack. Click on them, you could do shift, click, and select all the images. And then right click anywhere on any of those images, develop settings, paste settings. So what we're doing is we're then making sure that all these image are, images are uniform in edits. So you see that they move a little bit because of our focus point but the color, the clarity, all the contrast, every adjustment we've just done on that first image is now applied to the remaining images. And nothing should be wildly different because we didn't change our settings at all when we were shooting our focus, set, uh, focus stack. That's pretty important. You don't wanna change any settings, you just wanna change your focus point. So when you have your images ready to go, 
and they're edited the way that you feel like you, got, you, you want them to be in Lightroom. You can then shift click on the first one and then shift click on the last one. So you select all the images that are part of your focus stack. This is important. You want to right click, edit in, and then you want to go to open as layers in Photoshop. If you hit edit in Photoshop, uh, it's going to open each image in its own individual panel and it's fixable. But if you do open as layers, it's going to open all of your images within the same panel. They're already going to be layered on top of one another. Uh, it just makes life a little bit easier. Uh, don't, you know, kick yourself if you accidentally open each one individually. You can either close them out and go back and do it the correct way, or you can just control or command A and control or command X and then go into uh, the others and paste them on top of one another. So here we are, we've got all four layers. You can see them right here, layered on top of one another within Photoshop. So we're really close to having this done and, and focus stacked. Now we just have to hit two buttons essentially. So what you want to do is you want to take your layers, shift click, make sure you highlight all of them. Then you want to go up to edit, auto align layers, and then projection auto. Hit OK. And what it's going to do now is Photoshop is going to push and pull the pixels just a little bit to make sure every pixel lines up on top of one another perfectly. Now, we didn't change any of our settings. We didn't move anything. So why are our pixels not perfectly aligned? Well, as you focus closer or further, your camera, it's going to have, or your lens is going to have this little zoom in or zoom out effect. Uh, so yeah, it's, you haven't moved anything, but it has that, uh, that change because of where you moved your focus point to. So now you can see, as I click and unclick the layers, all the pixels are perfectly aligned on top of one another. Now, we'll talk about the sky in a minute here, but our foreground is nice and aligned. And one thing that you have to pay attention to is if you zoom in on the edges, you can see that there's a weird little border going on. So each layer had to be pushed or pulled a little bit to uh, perfectly line up with the layer below it. So what you're going to have to do is you have to crop a little bit. So I'm going to hit C for crop. And then I'm just going to drag past that weird border and hit enter. And let's see if we got enough there. And it looks like we're good. So you just want to make sure they don't accidentally um, have these weird borders going on where you can see the multiple layers below. And a good way to check to see if you cropped enough is to unclick the eye and then click and make sure you don't see anything on your borders looking funky. Okay, if you unclick the uh, visibility of the layer and you see like a white border around, then you know you need to crop in a little bit more. All right, so we've got one more little thing to do here. We've got all our layers still selected. Then you're gonna to go to edit, auto blend layers, stack images, and we're gonna hit okay. And what this is gonna do is it's going to apply a mask to each layer and it's gonna essentially mask out all the pixels that are out of focus and keep the, the pixels that are in focus masked in. And when all is said and done, it's gonna give us a merged layer right on top here. And this is our focus stack. So now you can see next to each layer the layer mask and all the crazy masking that Photoshop did to mask in or out pixels. And on this merged layer, which is essentially our focus stack, we can now zoom in all the way. There's 100%. There's our front or the front of the mud cracks. And as we zoom or scroll through, you can see that this image is completely sharp from the closest five, six inches away from the camera all the way out to the mountains off in the distance. So that is the beauty of focus stacking. You can't obtain that kind of depth of field with extremely high apertures. You need to do a focus stack. So this is beautiful. Now, how do we uh, do a focus stack and, and then keep or have a sky that we want? So say like here, I had a bracket essentially. So if you look back in Lightroom, you could see here's the focus stack and then the darker frame shot for the sky here. So 
What I like to do is I can come in here and I can make my adjustments to the sky. Like I said, just throwing around some sliders. We'll right click, edit in Photoshop when it's all said and done as far as the editing goes in Lightroom. This image will then open up here in Photoshop. We'll hit Command or Control A, Command or Control X. So we're essentially selecting all, cutting it. We're gonna come into our focus stack and we're gonna do Command or Control V. It's going to uh, be put on top of our focus stack layer. And you can see as we toggle the visibility of this layer on and off, obviously things don't line up. So what we wanna do is we want to shift on our merged focus stack and then shift to click on our sky layer. Go up to edit, auto align. Okay, so this is going to align these two layers. Now I could click on and off for the sky and you can see it has aligned the mountains real nicely. And this is that weird white border I was talking about. So we'll have to do a little bit of a small crop, but let's do that first. So we'll hit C for crop. And let's go ahead and just kind of crop this in here. And let's see if I got it. I need to get a little bit on the right side. So we'll do another crop, just kind of like that there. And like I said, I'm just kind of running through this. You know, you take a lot, uh, a lot more caution with your and precision with your cropping. Um, so now we've got our sky layer and our focus stack below. And all you want to do is add a mask to the sky layer. Now, if you're using a luminosity masking, you can go ahead and do your luminosity masking however you do it. Um, but if you're just doing basic masking, what you can do is add a white mask. So remember, white reveals, black conceals. We have white mask, B for brush. Make sure black is set as our foreground color. And let's take our opacity to maybe, yeah, let's go 70%. Right click on the image, make sure our hardness is zero so we have a nice feather to the brush. And now we can just start painting in all down here, okay? So now you wanna make sure though that the area essentially below the mountains is masked in at 100%. Reason being is because we want to keep that perfect focus stack that we, we have. If we don't do it at 100%, then it's going to take, so if we do 70%, it's going to take 70% of the layer below, but keep 30% of the non focus stacked layer. So that kind of uh, goes against what we want to achieve here. So I'm just lightly blending this all together here. Um, now I use luminosity masking, so I would do this a little bit different on my own photo here, but you could see how you could bring all this together to make one photo with the darker sky and then one photo with the uh, lighter focus stacked region there. So yeah, now once again, zoom back in and you can see closest uh, mud crack, nice and sharp. Middle of the frame, nice and sharp. All the way out to the mountains, nice and sharp. And our sky looking awesome. So I hope that helped you guys out with understanding focus stacking and how to do it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to chime in on the video here. Um, or shoot me an email, delivery pigeon, whatever works best for you guys. Have a good one.